So go to Hebrews chapter 11. You should be, maybe still be there. Um, I really thought Pastor Mike was going to use some of the stuff I'm going to get into today, but he didn't. <laughs> I almost, almost wanted them to say to him, yeah, maybe I should have just stayed up there and kept preaching if you're going to take my sermon from me. Uh, but he didn't. He didn't. He, 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 uh, um, <laughs> hallelujah. Uh, well, look, we're going to start. We, the Holy Spirit is trying to get, wants us to, uh, a couple things. He wants us to kind of go back and to really refresh our hearts on, on faith. We're going we're to refresh it uh, just a couple more weeks, and then we're going to go over to covenant for a couple weeks. Um, but he just wants to refresh our hearts because, again, uh, the just shall live by faith. So what happens if you don't understand faith? What happens if you don't know what faith is? Uh, see, it, 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 and we'll, we'll deal with this just a little bit here today. We dealt with it last week. If you feel somehow that faith is this action, um, then you're really trying to do that action. And, and, and what, what happens when you fail at that action? You feel really crummy. You feel like a loser. You feel like you failed God again. Right? And, we, and, and, and so, so we, we spend more time as believers frustrated with, and again, so many people deal with this. Uh, I, I've heard, I don't know how many pastors or memes or whatever on online I've heard talk about um, how, hey, even Paul, the good he wanted to do, he didn't do. And the things that he didn't want to do is what he ended up doing. He says it in Romans chapter 7. And I'm like, man, you're, you're telling on yourself. Because Romans chapter 7, it is clear. I mean, there's very few things that are crystal clear in Romans. If you've read Romans, you understand what I'm saying there. It's uh, the lingo and the King James lingo in, in, in Romans is quite extreme, extraordinary. Uh, so there's very few things that are just crystal clear. But in, in, um, in Romans 7, he is saying, this is what life is like when I'm living in my flesh. When I live according to my flesh and I'm trying to do things for the kingdom of God. Too many Christians spend their lives trying to do things instead of being. And he says, when I try to do things for the kingdom of God, in the kingdom of God, I try to do joy, do confession, do uh, whatever. When I do those things, I find myself frustrated because I wake up in the morning with full intention to do it. And what happens by noon? Okay, what happens by the time I show up to work? Do do, <laughs> right? Right? It's yeah. I mean, it's it, it it's it, it, you've already messed up, and then the things that you wanted to do you failed at, and now you feel crummy. Well, that's in Romans chapter eight. He starts off immediately by saying, "There's a difference," because there is therefore now no condemnation. You no longer feel crummy when you're living according to spirit. It doesn't mean you're always perfect. But it means that you're spirit-led. You're building up your spirit man. So those things that you don't want to do, it become you just don't do it as much. Because your inside's getting stronger. I don't have time to go here. But, but your, your spirit man is getting stronger. Your insides, and your insides is where the substance of faith exists. And so when it's getting stronger inside, then it just becomes easier outside to walk. And if you fail in the doing, you get back into the spirit and correct, <laughs> and your spirit corrects those things that went off. So, so it is, it is, I mean, well, well let's, let's start where I, uh, Hebrews 11, because I just, I'm going to use this. I think this is just going to simply be our, because it's, it's a reminder that verse 33, who through faith. So it was because of faith. It was by faith. It was the substance of faith. It was, it was the currency of faith. Uh, it was faith itself that, that caused them to subdue kingdoms, brought righteousness, Obtained, excuse me, obtained promises, 
stopped mouths of lions. There's, again, I, I really think that there's a lot of people. Now, I think that you can look at Daniel, and you can and, and you can you can say well, he prayed three times a day in an open window. Uh, we we learned over Thanksgiving that he gave thanks in that open window daily to his God. And so we can really focus on that fact that he prayed three times a day. But here it said, and and because of that, he was able to go to the lion's den and not. But if we want to simplify that, that's what faith looks like. That's what, when you have the substance of faith inside of you, when you know that you know that you know, you're not going to be stopped because the situation looks bleak. You're going to keep doing it. That's what faith, that's what the substance of faith looks for when you've got a God operating in your life. Because he says, by faith, uh, the, uh, the mouths of lions were stopped. Uh, qu- by faith, with faith, it was faith, through faith, quenched the violence of fire. Escaped the edge of the sword. Out of weakness were made strong. Waxed valiant in fight. Turned to flight the armies of the aliens, those extraterrestrials. You know, they won. I'm, no, that's not what it is. Um, and, and, and verse 35, it says, And women receive the dead, their dead, to raise to life again. The substance that caused that all to happen. And we can go through and we can see how faith works. Faith, faith works th- like uh, um, make a, go, yeah, go make a cake for your son and you, but before you do that, make a cake for me. Okay, I'm going to sow before I make the cake for me. That's what faith looks like. That's when you have the substance of faith operating inside of you. That's what it looks like. You're going to obey the word of God. You're going to give even when, it, when it's hurt, going to hurt to give. But what's going to happen down the road? You're going to be sustained. Your child's going to be raised to life again. And we could, we could go on and on on these things. But these are what it's talking about. It was faith. It was the substance of faith that caused all these things to manifest and to happen. And beloved, when we start looking at the problems and the situations and the things in our lives that can overwhelm us, how are we ever going to get out of that? Are we going to beg our way out of it? Are we going to plead our way with God out of it? Lord, please, please get this thing off of me. Please break this thing off of me. How, How much begging does it take to get God to do something? See, that's, that's where we're, we're missing it. If we're going to subdue kingdoms, if we're going to break things, see things broken off of us, it's going to be the same way that those that Abel ha- gave a more perfect uh, sacrifice. It's going to be the same way that, that, uh, that Daniel ma- shut the mouths of lions. It's going to see, be the same way that Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah uh, uh, quenched the violence of fire. It's going to be by faith, and how will we know we have that faith? Because it will cause our outsides to do some stuff. There will be external proof of the internal substance. Amen. So so we've dealt with this area, and I, I just spent some time talking about the substance. Go over to 2 Corinthians chapter 4. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, I've heard that song. Hallelujah. Yeah. It's on. All right. In Second Corinthians chapter four. It, it's talking again. We're, we're learning about faith, and we're going to get back into our list. So y'all can't don't pull don't keep pulling stuff out of me. All right, just behave yourself. But in Second Corinthians chapter four verse eighteen, it says it like this: It says, "While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen, for which the things that are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal." Now again. That's what Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1 says. Now faith is the substance of things expected. In other words, I don't currently have it, but I know it's it's mine. But the evidence, 
What's your evidence of faith? I haven't seen it yet. So in other words, I don't need faith to say, I've got tissue. I've got tissue. You know, I've got tissue in. Uh, I, I, I don't have to have faith for this because it's in my hand. I have, it's, uh, the substance is in my hand. But now, if there's no tissue in sight and somebody says there's tissue outside the door, I'm going to have to trust your word on that. You, you, follow, you follow me on that. I'm going to, tra- I'm going to take your word on that, trust you on that, uh, to go get, to open that door and to go through that. So that's faith. Faith means that you, so that's what he says here in, in 4 verse 18. He says, we don't look at what we see because what we see is changeable. It changes. Uh, whatever you're going through today is changeable. How many times have we gone through things and we, and the enemy comes really close to convincing us, if not convinces us, uh, that this is how it's going to end. This is how it's going to be forever. You know, I, I've got sore knees. I've got a sore back. It's how it's going to be forever. Well, you know what? Sore knees, it's a changeable thing. And I, even, even in the natural, you can go get them injected, whatever. But it's a changeable thing. It's a temporal thing, so it can be changed. It, whatever is going on that you can see with your eyes is changeable. But the Word of God... The stuff that is in the word that, that, that is maybe calling those things that are not what we see in the, as though they were, the, the stuff that's in the word of God, calling it as it already is, that changes not. Truth does not change. Facts change. Things that we understand as fact or as, 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 as well, I guess, was what we can see, that changes. Truth changes not. And so when the word of God says, by his stripes ye were healed, what that's saying is that you may, you may visualize and see in your, in your life pain in your knees, pain in your back, pain in your shoulder, headaches, migraines. That may be something that you see in a, in, in a con- continual thing that pops up from time to time. But, but the word of God says, by his stripes ye were healed. He himself took our infirmities, our diseases, and our pains. You say, well, there's nothing really wrong. It's just, I don't know, they can't find anything wrong. It's just my head hurts. I have migraines. They, they don't know what causes the migraines. It just hurts. Is it pain? Then he himself took your infirmities and bore your pains. So if he bore your pains... It's a cha- that, that's a truth, so that truth doesn't change, even if you've got a current migraine going on. Amen. Yeah. All right? So, so the point here is that faith says, I don't currently see it, but I know it's mine. I know it's already been taken care of, and I know what's mine. Right? Uh, so you might be right in the middle of the battle, you may not be able to see a way out, but faith says, I know the way's already been made. I know, the, I, I know he's already called the end from the beginning. Before the first migraine I ever had came on me, he had already called healing on my behalf. And so faith doesn't get, I'm not saying it doesn't hurt. I'm not saying you don't take ibuprofen or or. What is, what is it, Excedrin migraine or whatever. I'm not saying that you don't do that to help you all out because sometimes it can be really hard to fight a fight of faith when you're in the middle of the battle. When you can't sit up straight, uh, when, I, uh, when I got hit a couple years ago with vertigo, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm literally, I remember when I came that Sunday night and, and uh, I sat in the back and I sat there the whole time. I just had my eyes closed. I was like, I can't, I can't stand up in front. I preached on Wednesday night. Yeah. I preached on Wednesday night, but I, I sat, I sat in the back on that Monday night or that Sunday night, listening to Pastor Lisa preach, and I had my head in the back of the chair with my eyes closed, but I was listening to every word. 
I, I, whatever medicines they gave me to take, I took, but I, I, I was, I was, you know, you, 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 you do what you can do so you can fight the fight of faith. But you hold on to his word and you don't get overwhelmed by this is how it's, this is how it's going to end for me. I'm going to have to fight migraines the rest of my life. No. Well, I'm going to have to be on this medicine the rest of my life. No. That's one of those things with Sister Beulah is she gets, keeps getting taken off of medicines. I mean, I guess losing over 200 pounds will do that to a person, but <laughs> but, but she just keeps taking it. Why? Because it's not how it's going to end. All right? Now, now I, I love, oh, what's this illustration? I thought this illustration was a different illustration. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, that's a, that's a good one too. I was, I was, I was thinking in terms of uh, if you've ever seen a, um, the, the biggest one was MacGyver. Remember the old MacGyver? I don't know about the new MacGyver. I didn't watch the new MacGyver. The old MacGyver, how many perilous situations did he find himself in? Every week. Yeah, every week is like, yeah, how many more? Yeah, several a week. He was always in some really crazy situation. And, and yet, yet, no matter how serious it was, I, I don't know if the, I, I, I could imagine. Again, I've never watched one of them. I just know because of, of of uh, trivia, but yeah, there's probably one that he was, it was getting flooded and it was getting up there and he's like, how am I going to do this? Well, uh, you know, I can take a bobby pin and make a apparatus that will swim me to, to safety or something like that. And, and, you know, he's got, he's got this thing, but the one thing we knew, it's MacGyver. <laughs> he's not going to die. I don't know how it's going to happen, but it's going to happen. We have more faith in MacGyver than we do in God. Listen, we don't have to know how it's going to happen. We don't know have to know. Well, if the doctor, if the doctor would tell me exactly what's going on, then I could really kind of formulate a plan with God to help me. Well, then that means it's not God. When the doctor says it sounds like a migraine. Then you just simply say, well, I know my God. He's the star of the show. He's the one that shines. So he's not going to let, he's not going to stop short. He's going to come through the whole way. And, and, and I'm, this is not going to, I'm not going to go out having migraines. All right. Uh, go to second Corinthians chapter five. We'll just stay in Corinthians for a second here. And again, this is, uh, we're good to our list. It has six things. If you remember our list, and we've been through one, um, but, uh, but we'll try to get two more done today. Uh, well, such a simple uh, statement here. Chapter 5, verse 7. For we walk by faith, not by what we see. We don't walk by what we see with our physical eyes because that can be deceptive. It looks bad. It looks frustrating. And so, again, if you think in terms of... uh, (laughs) uh, August. I'm not going to tell the whole story. We know the story. August. We're going down to Tennessee for a for a getaway with uh, Sherry and Pastor Mike and and I'm driving our van and it's like 652 billion degrees outside and we're going through the mountains and uh, and my car uh, just has this thing it, it, it starts getting hot but I think a lot of cars do that when it's 95 degrees outside and so we're going up the mountain and I noticed we're getting up the mountain uh, just half half speed because the traffic was thick it was getting above half, which it doesn't usually do. And then when it got up to the top, it'd be fine. And so I noticed on my GPS that there was a big red spot coming up, which means we were going to stand still in 95 degree heat. And I was like, I don't want to do that. Now, when we went down to Sanibel earlier in the year, uh, I noticed that, uh, that that I would just kind of zoom in and I would see a little, it was down in Florida, so it's much flatter down there. 
and, and I'd notice that there would be a road that going here and up there and over there. And so, I th- so I'd, I'd see a red line. I'd say, I'm going to take this off. And I'd go, and we'd hit it. And we'd miss the traffic. And I was like, yeah. And we'd, and we'd, make, we'd make better time. So that was my idea. Because it looked like we're going to be stopped. And so I zoom in, and I see it go here. And I see over here where we can go right here. And it's just a little detour, but it comes out on the other side of that red line. So I'm thinking, because it looked like, now hindsight tells me it probably wasn't that bad on the interstate. But, but the shortcut I decided to take was brutal. And when I say brutal, I am not giving it full. Again, my, I, I've said this to many people. I wish we would have recorded it. But Mike was busy navigating. I was busy piloting. And Jessica and Sherry were busy speaking in tongues. Nobody was sitting there. We need to do this. We're, we're just like, we need to get from point A to point B. But we made it harder on ourselves because we went by what we saw. What you see changes. What you see can be deceptive. And that's what the enemy wants to do. Psalm 23 says, they, though I walk through the valley of the, the shadow of death, the shadow of a dog never bit anybody. But my goodness, it'll make you afraid. I grew, I grew up in, in central Illinois, and we had a park that was right on the edge of our town called McNaughton Park, and, and it was a huge, big park. And we would go, uh, Royal Rangers would go, and we would, uh, we would uh, camp there overnight, uh, usually one or two nights, and, and we'd, uh, we, we'd just have a blast. But we'd all, our, our guy, the guys that were in charge would always take us on these midnight hikes. And so the only thing that was out there was our flashlights and the moon. And it's amazing what the moon can cause a log to look like. I was certain a lion had escaped Africa and come over and taken up residence in central Illinois. I was convinced of that because I couldn't see. It was a shadow. It was was a shape. And it caused fear to come on me. We walk by faith. We don't walk by what we see because what we see are shadows. What we see are things that are not necessarily real, but the truth is real. This uh, this winter we decided because because our kids one of our kids decided to get married and the other one's engaged and so they had to do things with their families or go on their honeymoons or whatever you know and um, <laughs> meanies and so they didn't have time to go down to Sanibel with us this year uh, so so Jessica was like I've got to go on a vacation with my kids and so she said well Allison's a teacher so she has the week between uh, Christmas and New Year's off and and uh, Callie's in school, so she's she has the week between Christmas and New Year's off. And Ryan and and uh, and Taylor, we can give them plenty of time so they can just ask for those time off. So we got everybody off. We went down there, and we left. Remember when we left? It's like zero degrees, five degrees, frigid up here. I mean, ice all over the place. And 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 uh, that Monday we drove into Florida, sunshiny. And we're, st- we're driving in and we're looking, blue skies, sun. Now, come, this is the first time we've been down there in December. Normally when we go down there, we go down there in June or August. And so we're like, it's going to be so nice. Then we pull into Destin or to pull into to Fort Walton and we're driving along and we can see the ocean. And we're like, all that frozen tundra is behind us. Now things are changed. We can see the beach. We can see the sun. We can see the blue skies. And we have this picture in our mind that that this is going to be different. We pull up to our condo. We get out 40 degrees. Where's our coats? It was deceptive. We go up to our condo. We open up the curtains. And there it is. There's the gulf. There's that ocean. There's that water. There's, there's that beach. Oh, it was beautiful. Blue sky, sunshine. Open up that, close it. That was 40 degrees. <laughs> what looked like something that we've been very familiar with wasn't what it seemed. 
And that's how we view. So, beloved, that's why God says, we walk by faith. Don't b- walk by what you see. What you see will keep you home from church. What you see will keep you out of the word. What you see will keep you from worshiping. What you see will keep you out of prayer. What you see will keep you out of trusting God. But you don't understand. No, no. Don't walk by what you see. Walk by what's in the word. That's what faith is. Faith says, I know. Go, uh, go to Romans chapter uh, Romans 4. i do it quick so I know. Romans 4, I think it's 20. Let me get it. Uh, 18. Abraham, who against hope, he had no reason in the world at 100 years old to believe that he could be a father. He had no reason in the world. Everything he saw said no, but it was deceptive because God said yes. And when God said yes, that's all that mattered. And so it says against, who against hope, believed in that expectation that he might become the father of many nations. According to as it was spoken, according to as it was spoken, that's the way it's going to be. What's in the word? That's how it's going to be. I know it doesn't make sense. But that's, this is how it's going to be. That's what faith says. And that's why this substance of faith, our first point, get that out of camera range. They'll never know. <laughs> our first point is that faith is that substance. Actually, that's not a first point. That's just a, a pre. We're still introductory, introductory things. But our first point was that that substance grows. Faith comes by the word. Are you in a tough situation? Let's go find out what the word of God says about it. Well, no, I'm going to Google WebMD and find out what these symptoms might be. Why? Because you can see it on your screen. You're living by what you see. Go to the word. I'm not telling you that you can't have some natural, you know, your knee hurts. Well, ice it, heat it, whatever. And then, and then stand on the word of God that, that your knees are strong. That by his stripes you were healed, that he himself took your from and bore whatever pain it's, whatever, what's causing those knee pains? He already took, he already took care of it. Do you understand Okay, right there. Isaiah. Chapter 42. Put up there. Put in the, do we have the Bible basic English on that? I actually don't know if we have that on there or not. No? You, you, yeah, I'll let you say it real loud here in a second. But Isaiah 53, we know 53, but in 54, verse 14, it says many were astonished, prophesying what Jesus would be on the cross. And it says many were astonished at thee, his visage, the way he looked. I know we don't use visage. You need to go up to somebody tomorrow and say, your visage is amazing. Are those fighting words? I don't know. His visage was so marred. More than any man, and the form, his form more than the sons of man. Now read that out of the Bible in basic English. Verse 14, 52, 14. Sorry. As many were astonished at thee, his visage was so marred. More Do it in the Bible, Bank. It English. is. What's the end of it say? Oh, she went away from it. So he showing many nations, so okay. All right. That's okay. I, I'm not mad at her. I'm not mad at her. Get 
this back on. All right. No, I, I, it's, it's okay, but um, open up, you silly thing. Isaiah 52, 14, the Bible in basic English, says, as peoples were surprised at him, And his face was not beautiful so as to be desired. His face was so changed by disease that as to be unlike that of a man. And his form was no longer as the sons of man. Now what a picture of this is Jesus hung on the cross. What does it say that he did when he hung on the cross? He took our infirmities. He took our pains. So on that cross, it's okay. I know, it's just, it's, I know, it's, it just, it, deci- it decided to make you look bad. It was, it was a foam technology. When he hung on that cross, I, you know, one of the things that, one of the first ones that I, that I, uh, that I always think of is, anybody remember the TV show, uh, the movie, The Elephant Man? Merrick or something like that, where his head was so deformed. Uh, one, one day, several years ago, I went into the doctor for a physical and I mean, this is years ago, and there was a man in the waiting room. I felt so sorry for this man because I don't know what was up with him. I don't know what was going on with him. He was in a wheelchair, and his whole face had just drooped. And I'm not talking about just sagged a little bit. It was drooped. And my heart just was like, oh. But I thought, I don't know what was wrong with him, but Jesus took that. Whatever, whatever was on him, it came on Jesus. And that's why they looked at him. They, were, they, they weren't kind of just kind of like, oh, it's sad. They looked at him. They couldn't figure out what was going on because you're hanging on a cross. They've seen this many times. How is your face sagging? One of, one of, the, one of the things, one of the battles uh, in my sister's uh, battle with cancer is, is she, she developed a knot. And I, I don't know exactly what it is, but a knot on the side of her shoulder that stuck out severely lymph node probably or something like that but it was severely stuck out there and I thought that, that would be, be one of those things they look at and they go why is that growing out of his neck you know it says that they didn't break his legs because not one bone but if he took the knee pain when he was on that cross he took that for us And so therefore, where we shouldn't be believing, where we, it should, it's going to be a lifelong process. It's just, how about this life from the pit of hell? You're just getting older. You just get pains when you get older. That's, a pit, that's from the pit of hell. Jesus didn't just die for, uh, die and, 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 uh, for the pains of those 50 years and younger, 60 years and younger. Oh, but you're getting older, so he didn't die for your pains. That's baloney. He died for your pain just like they did. And and there's no reason why you can't live out your days walking pain-free. But against hope, you've got to get in faith, get that substance of faith, get that substance of faith built up in you. So that you can now live by faith and not by, fi- by sight. That the substance of faith is more real to you than the battle that you're currently going through. So the first one was faith cometh by hearing. The second one that I want to talk to you today about. Um, I want to get through two of them, but. Well, somebody taught way too much on that introduction part but so first faith cometh by hearing second faith is activated by your mouth it is beloved i'm telling you it is the major tool of the enemy to get you to say things that are stupid to get you to complain listen that's all the children of israel did 
And, and, and you can, we, can, we, we have, we've taught of the 10 times that they tested God in the wilderness. But every one of them, every one of them was solidified by the words of their mouth. They complained, they whined, they, 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 they uh, yelled at uh, Moses and, and Aaron. They, uh, they talked about how big the problem was. I've sat and I've heard people come to, up to me and they'll talk to me and they'll say, and again, I'm not, I'm not saying you don't share what you're, what, what, who, here's the report. Here's what's going on. But there's a lot of people who, who will spend 20 hours, I'm not 20 hours, uh, explaining how bad things are. And then throw in periodically, well, we know God's more than able. But this situation, that here's what the doctor said, well, we know God's, hey, the doctor says it's going to be horrible. It's, the doctor says I, I'm not going to be able, but we know it's more than able. We need to get much more acquainted with the word of God and the substance of that word of God. When the word of God says that, that he's already called those things from the, uh, uh, from the end at the beginning, when he says it's already done, when he says that he began a good work and you is faithful to complete it, we need to get much more real with that than what we're currently going through. But my boss said, but, but Biden said, but this person said, but my bank account says, listen. There's all these voices that are not without signification, but what does the Word of God say? Word of God says that though he was rich on the earth, absolutely in heaven, he was wealthier than any time he was on earth. But, but baby, he was rich on earth. When he was two years old, over, I think it's $400 million came into his hands. And I don't care how much you try. That's going to be hard to get rid of. Oh, Pastor Thad, they, they had to go into Egypt and, Moses, and, and, and Joseph didn't have a life, livelihood. And so they had to go into Egypt. So that just paid for everything. Are you kidding me? You think somehow that it took them $400 million to live a couple of years down in Egypt before they came back? Jesus was rich. And part of that wealth, it means John, or no, Judas... Carried around in his satchel. Again, he didn't carry around all millions of dollars with him. But he carried around his satchel enough that he could have, they could have spent 200, uh, 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 almost, a, almost a year's wages to feed that multitude. It wasn't enough, but they could have. That's how much they had with them. So though he was rich for kingdom's sake, just for heaven's sake. Paul's writing to the Corinthians and he tells the Corinthian church for your sake. You're going to hear something about the Corinthian church. At that time, they weren't sowers. And still, on the cross, he provided their wealth. For their sake, they'd be rich. It, again, Philippians, who were sowers, he said, my God shall supply all your needs according to his... My God shall. Guarantee. He said that Jesus took poverty. I don't have time to get in this. He took the poverty so you could be rich. When did he take the poverty? On the cross. So, so what, what were you saying about what your bank account says? That doesn't change what Jesus did, what the truth says. And if the truth says it, and, and, and it's time to give, it's time to bring your tithe, then that's all that matters. Because either the word of God is true or it isn't. And it is.
And if it is, then it's truth. It stands forever. And it's not changed by dispensation. It's not changed by time period. It's not changed by who's president. It doesn't change by whose party is in control or not in control. It doesn't change by any of that kind of stuff. It doesn't change by gas prices. I have no problem if you guys want to put jokes on the internet. There's a lot of silly stuff out there. I know for myself, I'm not going to, I'm not going to put anything in there that is... That is, uh, that th that even hits any kind of lack. You know how many eggs I bought at six dollars, uh, eight, eighteen pack. How many I bought before I realized? Jessica said, "What did you pay for eggs this time?" I have I have no idea because I don't pay attention to the prices. I didn't pay attention to the prices when we were when we were trying to figure out how to make ends meet. I, we need eggs. Okay, we're getting eggs. Amen. I'm not going to let the enemy get me in the mindset. Have fun with jokes. I don't care about jokes. I'm just, I'm just telling you. <laughs> Speak the word. Go to Hebrews 11. Are you in Hebrews 11 still? I don't know where we're at. <laughs> I think we're in Grace Fellowship of Moorhead, but that's as far as I got. <laughs> Hallelujah. What time? Okay. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 3. Now, as I was doing some studying on the words of your mouth and how faith is activated by the words of your mouth, faith cometh by the word, faith is activated by your mouth. And as I was studying that, I realized that anybody who wants to argue the importance of your mouth, you don't, you have not read the Bible. You just have not read the Bible. You, de you cannot tell me that the ma your mouth and what you say is not important. Or even if you want to, that it's name and claim it, grab it and blab, blab it and grab it, crowd. And you can't make fun of the, this and say that you are a Bible person. Because when I start, when I, I, I was like writing this and I, I, I kind of wrote out a section and I was like, that's pretty good. And then I started thinking, oh, I, I think I've only got like one mention of even Hebrews in this. And Hebrews chapter 10 is full of this stuff. I mean... I, it's, it's, it's the word. What you say is what you're going to live. If you got junk in your mouth, guess what's going to be in your life? Those little idle, flippant words that mean nothing but are just little casual Sayings that you throw out, oh, that scared me to death. You are producing what's coming out of your mouth. I didn't mean that. That's not what I meant, death. But you're talking death. It's a dead end. Or a cul-de-sac. <laughs> or a... Uh, not through street. No, we're going to say dead end. Well, sure, if you don't stop at the end of it, you could be in trouble. Stop at the end of it and turn around. And guess what? It's just a street that doesn't go through. Don't tell me it's a dead end. Because when I get to the end of the street, I'm going to still be kicking it. People are like, oh, Pastor said that's not what I mean. What I want to just see is how much death culminates our society. Amen. What's it called in football? What, 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 what is, you know, some of you may not know this, what does football call their overtime? Sudden death. But only one team's going to have sudden death and one team's going to have sudden victory. Why not call it sudden victory? It's because death just culminates our, dominates our society. But notice here, so, so, so I'm, I can't get into this as deep as I want to, but we're going to get into it deep. No, we're going to get it. <laughs> Verse 3. This is where I thought Pastor Mike was getting into my stuff. Through faith, we understand. <laughs> Some people don't understand this. But through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the power of God. 
How, how were the worlds framed? The By the word. So that things which are seen are made by the things which do not appear. So there was nothing. And up until mankind, Jesus didn't put, God didn't put his hand on anything. He just said, light be, worlds be, separate, everything. Everything was the power of the bee. Everything was in the, I preached a sermon on that, the power of bee. We need to quit talking about uh, um, how, how little things and start creating with our gas prices, B, gas, B, money, B, health, B, strength, B. But, he's, but, but it was through his words, it was him speaking that framed. And that, and that word framed simply means to come together and to be made complete. Um, in, in this room here, now, now, now someone like Mike might view things different. But when everybody walked in this room, how many thought about the two by fours that are holding up the walls? How many thought about the joists that are running through the ceiling? No, none of us did. But what if we take away the two by fours and the joists? We still have all the beautiful walls. We still have the posters. We still have the sound equipment. We still have the wreath that's still up there in that, that uh, back bar. We still have all the microphone. We have beautiful John over there on the soundboard. Uh, but we don't have any two by fours or joists. In the building, what do we got? You just got a heap of mess. We can't use the banners. They might be in here, but they're just going to be, they're not going to look like they do. We, we might use the wreaths. We might use all the, the plants that we have around here. We could have the best sound system in the world. It's not going to be operate in that room because with the, without the framing, without the framing of the building, nothing's getting put together. The first thing that happens is the framing of the building. I understand foundation. Um, but, I mean, there's, there's that. But it's, it's the framing. You take away the framing, there ain't nothing else. And God says, and it was by faith, that when God the Father, God the Father did not create the earth out of nothing. He created the earth by faith. And you take away faith. You take away, well, you take away, there's nothing. It would still be a big black hole. Well, Pastor Thad, it's been 700 billion years. And so something was likely to happen. No, nothing. God spoke it and bang, it happened. It was by faith that he spoke it. He didn't see anything and he didn't sit there and say, look how dark it is out here. If he would have talked about, if he'd have kept, ta if he'd keep talking about how dark it is, guess what would have been, guess how things would be? Dark. God the Father looks at his angels and goes, goodness, it's dark out there. I wish there was some light. I, I don't understand why. This vast expanse of space and all that is just black. I don't understand it. Why is it so dark in here? Couldn't it use some light? I don't understand why it's so dark in here. Je Jesus, come here. Have you noticed how dark it is out there? Fast forward. 700 billion... 7,000, 10,000 years later. And he's still going, why is it so dark? I don't know why it's so dark. But that's not what he said. He looked out at the darkness and he spoke the things that was not as though it was. Light be. 
And what happened when he spoke light be? It were. It was done. It was finished. And everything he spoke, he didn't speak as, he didn't, there's not a bit of it that said, we can't, I can't, it's big, it's too big. He just said be and it was. Fish be, fish was. Birds be, birds was. Now, now, now notice this. <laughs> when you begin speaking over things in your life that you can't see, you begin building the framework for what you're expecting. When Pastor Mike, at his job, starts a, starts a project, and maybe the project is a blank room, or maybe it's nothing, maybe it's just dirt. They have a blueprint that says, here's what, here's what our goal is, how we're going to build it. We're going to start by the framework. We're going to start by framing out walls. We're going to start by framing the things out, putting nails in, putting things together. And, the, and, and we're not going to knock them down. Notice this. When God spoke, it created the framework for the worlds to be hung on. The lights, everything, the animals, all that stuff. His word. I know very little about science. I know animals stuff. That's it. That's on uh, animals and trees. <laughs> but one thing I learned is that the makeup there there is more in that in that chair that's not there than is there. The atoms and the electrons and all that whatever's going is operating what we see is a substance that we can sit on. But in in actuality, and I don't understand it, people anybody wants me to explain it to them, go to her. I don't know what I'm talking about. I know what I'm talking about. But my, my understanding is, is there's actually legitimately more that's not there than there is that's there. It's just that they're working together. They're being bound together by something. What are they being bound together by? The same word that said light be, substance be at creation and has not changed. God didn't change his mind. God didn't say light be and then the next breath go, um, I don't know. I don't know, if, I don't know if this is enough light. I don't think this light will last forever. I don't think it. No, he said, he said this in Genesis. He said, while the earth remains, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, day and night shall not cease. Why? Because I spoke it into existence and I didn't change my words. So what so what what's holding this together? Oh there's there's some of you electrons, protons, Jimmy Neutron. Jimmy Neutron's in there somewhere and they're all working together, but they're being held together by a force. And that force is his word. And beloved, you may be looking at your life and be thinking, things seem scattered. Things seem messed up. How will this ever come into light? It come into being? You start speaking the word of God. Don't change it. But what if circumstances get worse? Almost expect it. <laughs> Unfortunately. Because the enemy is trying to get you out of that. But you keep speaking it. Don't let the devil. Now here, here's the substance. How do we build it? We build it by the word of God. The substance of faith needs to get bigger. So what's coming out of our mouth, what's spewing out of our mouth. When, when what's coming out of our mouth is lack of faith and is talking about the darkness more than the light, what that's telling us is that substance needs to get bigger. It doesn't mean you need to try harder to talk right. It needs you to get more word in you. You need to go and spend time with the word. Get in prayer, get in that time alone, get in your worship place, get in your secret place and get that built up so that that junk that's in there ain't coming out. 
Now, now let me finish this. Oh, goodness. Goodness. <laughs> Go to Matthew 12. He ha- God hasn't changed his words, and that's why everything is still in existence. That's why that wall hasn't changed. You can still put, you can hit that wall, and it's still going to hurt your hand. It's because it's still being held together by that word that hasn't changed. That's why you can still build houses, businesses. It's because his word hasn't changed. Therefore, the substance, the, they're still being held together by the word. In Matthew chapter 12, verse 13, notice, or verse 36, sorry about that. It says, but I say unto you, every idle word, those are the words that you didn't mean to say that go contrary to the word of God. Every idle word that men shall speak, they will give an account of in the day of judgment. And, 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 and the best, best insight you'll ever get on anything in the world, people are like, so at the, at the end of time when I'm standing before God, I'm going to have to give an account of those idle words? No, that word judgment in Greek is the word crisis, K-R-I-S-I-S. Guess what word we get from it? When you get in a situation where you need all these chaotic, crazy things where, that, are, that have just disintegrated things, you need everything to come together, you're going to still be scattered because of those idle words. Those things that you spoke that maybe you didn't really want to believe, maybe you love the Word of God, maybe you believe the Word of God, but it's not the substance has been... When those things get spoken, it works just like it would work if God decided to take back his word on light B. Is these chairs would just fall apart. Verse 37. For by your words, you'll be justified. And by your words, you will be condemned. Beloved, in the same way that God did it at creation, when we speak things and we keep speaking things and we don't change our confession, things begin, things begin to get, get framed in our lives and they begin coming together. But when we change them, that's when they start falling apart. As long as you speak and keep those speaking those same words that provide life, the word of God, then what you're believing for will come together, will be held together, and will stand. I, I want to... Oh, how am I... That, all right, that's okay. That's okay. Let, let, I'm just going to... Don't turn there. Mark, if, if John Mark... Why did I say John Mark? Mark. You're, Mark. Mark McBrayer. John McBrayer. It's John, I thought Mark does not sound right. What in the world? It's been a long morning. No, I, I, let me, let me, I tried to hurt. If he wants to, if Mr. McBrayer, John, wants to keep up, he can. I'm not wrong. His name's, his name's John Mark McBrayer, so uh, I'm not wrong in anything. So it's just really weird calling him Mark. That's why I was like, what in the world am I doing? But in Mark chapter 5, verse 25, it talks about um, a, a Jesus is being t- tugged on. Uh, he's, he's been pulled up. A man comes and says, man, my daughter is sick. She's sick unto death. And and she's 12 years old. She's 12 years old. I, I really find that this is really important for us to understand. Because again, some people think that, that old age uh, reverses the promises of God. And it just doesn't. Because there was a little girl that was 12 years old that had most of her life ahead of her. And she was sick unto death. And Jesus said, yeah, I'll go, I'll go see her. And on the process of going seeing her, there's this lady, there's this little old lady who's been bleeding, for, had an outflow of, 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 ble- of bleeding for 12 years. As long as that girl's been alive, she's been fighting this thing. She's older. We know she was at least 24, at least, you know, whatever. She's at least, she's, she's older lady. She's weak. She's frail. And Jesus still stopped to take care of her before he went because he wasn't moved by circumstances. Because he knows as soon as I speak it, it's going to be done. But here's the power. It tells us in scriptures that she said, if I can just but touch the hem of his garment. If I can just but touch. And see, here's the thing. is that The, the phrasing of that word in the Greek means she said it and she kept saying it. 
She did not change. She never at one point in the process of walking up. Can you imagine her, the frailty of this lady coming up and looking at a crowd of men? Big, burly men. I mean, it's kind of like if all of us guys in this room, uh, you know, g- decided to stand in a huddle and had Sister Ruth try to break through. <laughs> Sister Ruth would just say, I'll just wait. <laughs> she, she'll, borrow, she'll borrow Pastor Elisa's skillet. <laughs> she, 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 this was an, listen, this was an impossible task. Which tells you something about the, her feistiness to get to, because she was convinced, she was absolutely convinced, if I could just buy. And she's out there at the very exterior of this huddle of the press that was on Jesus, that was crushing it. And she's on the outside, and she's like, man, if I can just touch the hem of his garment. And she's using every bit of strength that she has left because she doesn't have a lot. She's been bleeding for 12 years, she's been poked and prodded on by doctors for 12 years. They've tried everything, leeching her and all that kind of stuff, trying to figure out how to take care of her. And, they're, and she's pressing, she's pushing through. She sees a window. She a, sees a man who stands there like this, and she goes, I'll crawl through his legs. And she scutters through his legs. And she gets to the other side, and still, all she sees is a group of legs. And she says, if I can just touch the hem of his garment, I'll be whole. And she, and she squeezes him, and then she stands up, and she goes, <laughs> sucks it in, squeezes between her. She looks there, and all she sees is a bunch of armpits. And she goes, man, if I can just touch the hem of his garment. Not one time does it say, she said, this seems like an impossible task. Will I ever get there? She said it. She didn't change her confession. And she pressed in. And she touched the hem of his garment. And immediately, the flow was stopped. And we know the rest. Jesus actually stopped and said, what? Because it was, imp- as, it, was a, it was as important for that older lady to experience the wholeness of God as it was for a 12-year-old to be restored to life. Amen. Beloved, it's not if you're 80. It's not if you're 40. It's not if you're 12. What substance is on the inside of you? And you'll know what substance is on the inside of you. Because it'll come out. It'll sound like the word. Faith. If you want to activate your faith. Get what you're saying changed. Quit talking. I had a. I'm wrapping up. I'm not going to read any more scripture that you know of. I, 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 I saw this. Uh, Woody Woodson posted this on Facebook and I thought it says losers talk about what they're going through while winners talk about what they're going to. If you know the fight's already fixed, that's what he said, then you'll just, you're not going to talk about what you're in the middle of. Listen, folks. You can know the promises of God. And if you're part of this church, you know the promises of God. I mean, whether it's real, you know them. You've got mental agreement that, yes, Jesus heals, Jesus prospers, Jesus joys, Jesus peaces, Jesus. You understand that. But you can sit back and watch others be blessed. Through faith. Or you can activate and begin framing your tomorrows. What you're in the middle of today, you framed yesterday. And today there's some of us that need to say, I'm going to frame my tomorrows by changing the words of my mouth. By building my faith substance up and then letting my words flow out. Amen. If you're speaking truth, I don't care what you're in the middle of today, beloved. Keep your keep your confession the same. Keep your words the same. Let's stand together. Hallelujah. 
Now next week I have to go through four things. Hey, y'all, y'all believe in y'all believe in miracles. <laughs> You're not going to run out of miracles anytime soon. <laughs> Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, we love you. Um, your word is so magnificent that if we'll, re- if we'll study it, if we'll read it, if we'll get into it, and not just, not just say, oh, this is what this guy said, and this is what this guy, and this is what this Google monster said, um, but we'll get into your word and find out what your word said. A, all those silly religious questions will be answered. Because religion loves to work inside of questions. You love to work inside of answers. You didn't say, if any of you lack wisdom, ask of me and I'll ask you more questions. You said, if any of you lack wisdom, ask of me and I will give to all men. And I'm not going to shame you for asking. So we need to get in the word and find the answers. But then we need to speak that word. Let that word become more real to us than anything that's going on around us. We might look at a deserted place where God has said, this is where my garden's going. And we don't need to be busy arguing God about how, how impossible it is to grow a garden in the middle of the desert. We just need to start talking about a garden. <laughs> we just need to start talking about what we're going to eat in a couple months. going to talk about the beauty of it. In Jesus' name, Father, there are healings happening. And I've used this one a couple times, but there are knees that are being restored. Whether it be cartilage, muscles, tissues, whether it be that padding that's in there, whether it be just an injury where something has been knocked off. There are knees that are, 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 are being rejuvenated right now. I'm telling you right now that, that, uh, that where you used to not be able to bend without pain. There is healing that has happened. There, 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 there's inflammation that's going down. There's something that's going on that's caused the excess inflammation in your knees. And that, that whatever that is, is being corrected and inflammation is going down. And I believe instantaneous. So begin just checking those knees. Watch that, that, watch that go down. And the other one I'm, I'm, I'm seeing <coughs> is, is migraines. They may not have a migraine right now, but when I spoke migraines, it, it brought chills up and down their spine because they don't know all too well what they feel like. Well, migraines are being broken today. Don't talk about them anymore. Don't talk about them like there's something you get. You speak, you speak like there's something that's in your past because there's something that you don't have anymore. You've been healed, you've been restored, and it's happening right now. Whatever, and again, I'm not a doctor, not a physician, but whatever triggers them, whatever trigger you've had is under the blood. And hallelujah. Don't talk about your bad knees or your migraines anymore. Talk about you're healed, you're healed, you're healed. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What's the old song? What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. Hallelujah. What a word. Hallelujah. 
I'm, I, I'm, I'm just going to have to let you go because I just want to sit up here and go for a while longer. But you guys all go, and I'm going to stand up here and go a while longer. I love you. Go with God. Walk in his blessings. Prosper. Be in health even as your soul prospers. I love you. God bless you. Go with God.